Que pasa, my trading amigos? I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of August 4. Now, you're probably already familiar with what we do on this show. Every day I go hunting looking for penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. You can call those hot penny stocks. Now, I determine if a stock has heat by looking at the charts first. I don't pay any heed to the filings of the news presses until I find a chart that has heat. The way I see it, the news and the filings are lumber you add to the fire. The fire is in the charts. What good does it do to throw a piece of lumber on a cold fire, a cold chart? It's not going to get it burning, not in most cases. But if you have a hot chart, one that's already burning, any piece of lumber, small or big, even an old piece of wood will still burn. So those are the sort of stocks I'm looking for. And I got three of those for you today. Now, the first one we're going to take a look at, she's not in breakout mode. She is in rocket mode. <laughs> this is MF. Make all the jokes about her you like. This is Miss Fresh Limited. She comes from China. This is a delivery company. They are building this huge network. They deliver food, medicines, primarily fresh produce. And it is growing. And you can tell so by the revenues. Well, the company had big news come out on Thursday. Double barrel shotgun piece of news. Two big things that they released. And the stock started to move on Thursday when the news came out. But Friday, she launched. She finished today just under two bucks at $1.98 with just shy of 285% gains. Now, I normally don't like to show you rocket stocks because they run out of gas as they're going up and then they just crash back down to earth. But I think this news is big enough that when she falls, she's going to bounce and she's going to take off again. So I would watch this, not for what she's doing right now, but I'd watch for the return, watch for her to bounce, and then I would get in on this one. It looks juicy to me. So MF, she is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. There's benefits to this. You can trade her for free. You can get in and get out and not pay for your transactions. That's really beneficial when you're building your position. You see a good price, you buy 25% of what you want because you don't know if it's gonna go up or down, and then she falls. Well, if you had bought everything at one time, you'd be bumming. Oh, I'm losing money. But now you can actually celebrate. Ah, I can buy another 25% cheaper. And it doesn't cost you anything to do that. Try doing that on the OTC. You got to start working the numbers. And I didn't want to miss this point. You can trade a pre-market, after-market. You don't need to pay anything extra. You don't need any special permissions, special qualifications. Just get in there and trade. There's a lot of price activity pre-market in a lot of these NASDAQ stocks. And remember, you've got to change your order period. It's not a day trade. It's an extended period trade. If you don't put extension in there, it won't see your order. It'll just ignore it. And you'll say, it didn't work for me. It'll work. You can have day plus extension, good till canceled plus extension, or just extension. But you got to have extension in there. All right. They really don't have a description for the company. I looked, they've got nothing here. They don't have anything in their news presses and it wasn't real clear in their filing either. So I played that video for you. I hope that gave you some insight. So let's take a look at the relative volume for the company. Whoa, she just exploded. She jumped, what, 30 times the regular volume, which would be 3,000% increase. And this is in the millions jumping from 4.3 million up to 123 million. I'm telling you, this is big news. I can see more bang coming from it still. Share structure for the company. This is great news. You'll notice that a lot of Chinese companies have very small share structures. I don't know why, I think they understand the value of shareholder value. This is a perfect example. Outstanding share count is only 5.1 million. That's for everybody, all the insiders, the management, the hedge funds, the institutions, and us. Take away all their shares and that's what's left on the open market that you and I are trading. So whatever that is, it's gonna be under 5.1 million. That is a very small float and that is gonna make the stock volatile. She will run hard up and she will fall down fast. So you gotta keep your eye on her, but this is what we look for if you wanna get big gainers. Now, something else I want to bring up here, the market cap. You see what we've got here? $113,000. Well, that's wrong. I'll guarantee you that's wrong. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. 
The company has received two warnings from the NASDAQ. One, they didn't meet the minimum bid price requirement. They've got to be up over a dollar. They can't stay under it for too long. If they do, they get a warning that they've got to get the price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days within a six month period of time. I think this company's only got two days under their belt right now. The other warning is that their market cap wasn't meeting the minimum requirement, which is 5 million. So right now we're at 113,000. Well, this is how the market cap is figured out. You take the outstanding share count, call it 5 million, just to make it super simple. And you multiply it times the price. Call that two bucks. Two times five is 10 million. So we've got that conquered, that is done. Now, I looked at the charts and it looked like it was like at 46 cents just the other day. And 46 cents, call it a half a dollar, times this should have been two and a half million. So that should have been roughly two and a half million, not 113,000, which was still under that five million. Now keep this in mind just for relative consideration. I don't like thinking of the market cap as a way to compare companies. This one has only five million shares. What if they had a billion shares? Well, a billion times that price means they'd be worth $2 billion market cap instead of 10 million all because they have more shares, but you get less shareholder value with more shares. So it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. In either case, that is the situation. Both the minimum bid price and the minimum market cap have been lifted up and they're going to have to maintain that for at least eight more days, I believe, to get out of hot water. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, we've got one 6K, which is related to the news. We're going to take a look at that through the news. We've got a couple 6Ks here about those warnings from the NASDAQ. And we've got a 20F. This is a financial. They come in a lot of forms. Disclosures, 10Ks, 10Qs, 6Ks, 20Fs. So this is theirs because they're a foreign country, a foreign uh, company. They do a 20F. So if you want to know anything about the company, there's your packet of information. I got to tell you, reading the Chinese ones, not that it isn't in English, it is. They're difficult to read. You also may want to consider that China can change at any moment which can affect the entire Chinese market over here. They could put out some good news and every single Chinese company will rise. doesn't matter what sector they're in. Every boat on the water rises when the water rises. And we see that happen a lot with Chinese stocks. And when they have low floats, they run. But the same thing can be said if there's bad news come out of China. You can even get locked out. I mean, they could just get locked out if us and China had problems. All of a sudden, they just disappear. You've got to keep that in mind. So that basically covers everything for the disclosures. Let's go take a look at that news. So the first two pieces of news here at the bottom are the NASDAQ warnings for the minimum bid price and for their market cap. Then we had the big news come out on August 3rd. They tell us here that Miss Fresh Limited today announced that it has entered into two share purchase agreements with two different investors. The first agreement is for financing. The second agreement is for an acquisition. The first one for financing, the investors have agreed to purchase 5.4 billion shares of their B ordinary shares, which is worth $27 million. This represents 88% of the company. Folks, that is called a change of control. Mr. Zhang Zhu is now the chairman of the board, chief executive officer of the company, and the biggest holder of the company. Those are all his shares. Change of control, folks. And the business acquisition, the company agrees to purchase all the ordinary shares of Majoy Infinite Limited for a purchase price of $12 million. This acquisition is planned to be closed within 45 days after the satisfaction of waiver and closing. I don't know when that's going to be, but it will be within 45 days. Well, not within, but soon, 45 days after that. They want to get it done in a hurry. And they tell us down here that MeJoy Infinite Limited is a digital marketing solution provider incorporated in Hong Kong. 
MeJoy is dedicated to helping its clients deliver their online marketing campaigns to engage their target customers and drive higher growth of their clients' business. Obviously, if you're going to be a delivery business, you're going to get more business if people know about you. So they're going to have all sorts of campaigns. The business is just exploding over there right now, folks, and that's a big country. There's a lot of room for growth. So let's go take a look at this rocket chart and let's see if we can determine where maybe a couple good buying points would be after she falls. As we always do, we're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform, actually the only trading platform I got. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade and that didn't cost me anything either. And in case you were wondering, no. I am not being paid by TD Ameritrade to say that to you every single day. I'm just keeping you in the loop. I'm informing our new viewers. That's all. So we are looking at Miss Fresh Limited, ticker MF. This is a six month, four hour view. Our old high came in December of $2.60. We broke that on Friday, hitting a new high of $2.72, which she hit after market hours and stuck. I think she's there right now. As you can see, she was falling all this time until the breakout, and you are looking at an atypical breakout chart. The price way up underneath the 200, that 200 coming down like a ski slope and finally leveling out into the parking lot, which is normally where we look for the breakouts to occur. Now, I look for token signs to give me, well, a sign that they are looking to break out. These green bars right here, the ones that jump all the way through the 200 and come right back home. They don't go any deeper. Sometimes they even come down higher, but they pierced it. They broke the 200. This to me says I'm looking for an opportunity to run. Well, we had one of those just a couple days ago and she's pretty much flat now. That's the timing I'm looking for. So I was ready and waiting for her to make an attempt. Well, this catalyst didn't hurt at all. Perfect timing came out on Thursday. She was down here at roughly 45 cents. On Thursday, she hit a high of about 87 cents, just that shy of 100% gains. But it was Friday, she launched herself up to that high of 272. Lots of volume on Friday, a lot more than there was on Thursday. Even Wednesday had a pop of volume. But look at all the days before, nothing. Osculators are simply erupting right now, folks. Every single one of them is red hot and climbing to the moon. You cannot go wrong if all of your osculators are pointing up. 20 day, one hour view. Really flat for many, many days at a low here of 41 cents. There's our jump. This is when I would be watching it. And then she took off a little bit on Thursday, but Friday was outrageous. Now pay attention to how far that nine day SMA has been climbing. The price is on top of it, floating like helium. It's got a really low float, right? We don't even know what the float is. We just know it's under 5.1. But she's getting way far away from that 20. This is why I'm expecting it to drop. It's a rubber band. You can only stretch it so far and then it has to come back. So I would watch for it to come back to there. Matter of fact, let's grab our Fibonacci here. This is going to give us some supports and resistances that we can use, even though they're not attached to any of our historical price points. I'm going to tag the beginning of this surge and then the top of that surge. And all of these are supports and resistances that we can use to trade. And you can watch the price respect them. They will. So I don't ever want to see a surge come down below the halfway point, the 50% mark right there. If it comes underneath that, I mean, I expect it to go up and down. And I am happy. I'll be happy if it falls just 50% because that's normal. And if she stays above the 50% mark, I know she's probably most likely going to continue to climb. But it's the exact opposite. If it comes underneath the 50, chances are she will continue falling until she finds the next strongest SMA. So right now she's clear up here hitting the top. She is banging her head on it. If she was to fall, the 20 is clear down here, but I wouldn't want to see her come any lower right now without any more climbing of say a dollar 59, a dollar 60. I would not want to see her come down any lower than that. 
which would be a good buy point. If she comes down just a little bit underneath that 50, like a rubber ball in water, she would come back on top of the 50. If she got on top of the 50, to me, that would be a buy point. I would consider that she has made up her mind not to fall and she's getting ready. She'll bounce on the top a few times, making sure it's strong, and then she'll take off. If she doesn't stop on the 50, she could fall down to the 20, maybe even the 50 day SMA, but she's got a low float. So she will move extreme when she moves, but there's a lot of excitement around this stock. So I wouldn't expect her to come down that low. I really wouldn't. Maybe the 20, which that's right now at $1.25. You're gonna have to watch pre-market folks. This thing could pop pre-market and you can buy it if you want pre-market and you can sell it pre-market as well. Osculators on our one hour are hot. Look at all of them pushing to the moon. RSI is clear up there at 77.4 right now. Coming down to our five day, five minute. So she has been running hard and strong, pushing herself away from the 200 day SMA. She's respecting the 50. You can see right there, she's going through the 50. She's bounced off of it. She's now bounced off of the 200 day haul which is all a lot like your 200 day SMA, takes 200 days of prices, averages it together, but then puts more credence on the current prices. And here recently, we've been seeing a lot of penny stocks pay attention to the 200 haul, H-U-L-L. -L. And that's what it's doing right now. It is giving heed to that 200 haul, bounced off it twice, and it is now climbing. She is still looking strong. I can't deny that. Even on the five minute chart, None of our oscillators are pulling down right now. None of them. They're all strong. RSI has been burning up in the red on every single time chart. So she is looking extremely strong to me, even though she's a rocket stock. I would be leery of the bounce, but I think that pre-market, there could be some good strong rises and very well between 9.30 and 10. After 10, I'd be looking for a fall, just the way I see it. Our next top penny stock also comes from the NASDAQ. This is ticker DRTT, Dirt Environmental Solutions. Now her chart is hot. It's a lot like the last chart we looked at. It is an atypical breakout chart that's already broke out, but only four days ago. Two days she was climbing to the 200 and Thursday and Friday she got over the 200 and all four days are a nice steady climb without any interruption. She just had financials. They were an improvement and they were good. And she's got consistent, steady news about how their business is progressing. So with that sort of chart, we got to take a look at this. So DRTT, she finished the day at 53 cents and just a smidge over 24% gains. Now we've got a description here, but I like the one they have in their news press. So we're going to use that one instead. Dirt is a leader in industrialized construction. Dirt Systems of Physical Products and Digital Tools empowers organizations together with construction and design leaders to build high-performing, adaptable interior environments. Operating in the workplace, healthcare, education, and public sector market, Dirt System provides total design freedom and greater certainty in cost, scheduling, and outcomes. Dirt's interior construction solutions are designed to be highly flexible and adaptable, enabling organizations to easily reconfigure their workspaces as their needs evolve. This flexibility is especially important in today's rapidly changing business environment where organizations need to be able to adapt quickly to new challenges and opportunities. The company is headquartered in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Now, this is primarily what the company is working with, industrialized, commercialized businesses. But as you're going to see in the news, they are now expanding. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Let's see what we got. We've got an increase of like almost 300%, three times our normal volume, jumping from just under a half a million to just under 1.5 million. Share structure for dirt. Don't know what the float is. Outstanding share count is up near 104 million. Our float won't be over that. Financials for dirt. Well, she has taken a dip since 2019, but she's been holding steady here, actually growing from 2021. She's back up to $172 million, and she got to keep 28 million of that. Quarterly, 
Well, this only brings us up to the first quarter. Uh, they did $36 million in the first quarter of 2023, and they got to keep $8.6 million. Looking at the second quarter, which is not up here yet, but we can see right here. They tell us that for the second quarter, the revenues were $44.8 million. And they did what? $36 million the first quarter. So they have grown by 22%. They achieved adjusted EBITDA, which is like gross revenues, of $1.9 million, which is up $11.3 million. So they must have been really down. Liquidity. They've got 28.1 million cash on hand. And on May 9th, 2023, the company entered into an assignment and co-ownership agreement with Armstrong World Industries, resulting in cash inflows of 10 million and gains of sale of patents from software of 6 million. So they have got money coming in from this new deal with Armstrong. You know Armstrong, Armstrong Flooring. That's the company we're talking about here. It seems that this company, Dirt, has a program called ICE. And Armstrong has a product called Product Works. And Product Works needs ICE to work well. So they have come together and they're each going to make money off of this deal. Now, the uh, chief financial officer, Bradley Little, says the pricing, cost reduction, Cash initiatives implemented over the past year have bolstered our liquidity and provide a solid platform from which to drive profitable growth for the future and also to navigate market uncertainty. We have made up considerable ground following a slower than expected start to 2023. Now, one of the big deals about building up your profits is cutting down your expenses and a lot of companies are streamlining right now and that's one of the things they've done here sales and marketing expenses have decreased by 6.6 .6 million in the last quarter general administrative expenses decreased by 5.5 million operation support expenses decreased by 2.5 million and technology and development expenses decreased by 1.3 million you're looking at over 15 million they have gotten rid of expenses that means money they're going to be able to keep so they're going to be kicking up their profit levels nicely let's take a look at the disclosures for the company we do have a bunch here a lot of form fours i'm always interested in these because this lets us know whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock well here they acquired it but nobody purchased it this S8 tells us that they had an incentive program and they're getting a bunch of shares for it. I don't know the particulars, but they didn't buy any. This 10Q obviously is their most recent financial. That's where you're going to get all the best information. Forget about Google. Forget about the news presses. Get used to reading those financials. And then last but not least is the 8K, which is associated with the news we're going to take a look at. Now, they've had a lot of news here. We're not going to go back and look at it all. I just want you to see it as consistent. There is steady progress being made here. So, I have gone back to June 7th. Dirt welcomes Empire Office to its global partner network. They have a network of a lot of companies that help them build. This is a construction company that's been in business for 75 years, and they're going to be used to expand the business in Alabama and Florida. Here, Dirt Chicago Experience Center opens its doors to demonstrate dynamic interior construction. They are in Chicago showing off what they can do, trying to stir up some more business. Then on June 28th, visionary startup Arthrado launches to revolutionize the future of housing with Dirt. I found this one very interesting. They tell us here that Arthrado, in partnership with Dirt, will meet the urgent need for affordable and sustainable development converting unused office spaces into residential mixed-use housing that we can use. Arthrado, a visionary new startup, launched today with a mission to transform the housing industry and address the urgent need for cost-effective, sustainable, and efficient housing across North America. In partnership with DIRT, the company is focused on using prefabrication methodologies to convert and underutilized office spaces into modern residential and mixed-use housing. 
The launch of Arthrado marks a groundbreaking evolution in the housing industry as we strive to repurpose underutilized office spaces into thriving residential mixed use communities. And I think that's a big deal, folks. There's a lot of office spaces that are not being used and everybody's trying to fix them up for new office space. But you've got to have thriving businesses and we're not in a market where a lot of businesses are kicking up and starting right now. So the best use is for residential and that would be hot. That would help a lot of cities. That would help a lot of people. The last piece of news we have came out on the 18th. Dirt and built interior construction win three new innovative workplace projects. They just keep doing more and more. What they do is wanted by everybody. Taking used space and converting it very quickly and cheaply to a more ergonomic workspace. And now they're doing it with living spaces as well. And I think that's going to be bigger business than commercially, actually. Let's go take a look at that chart and I'll show you a breakout that's probably got more to give. What a dirt chart. <laughs> this is ticker DRTT, Dirt Environmental Solutions. This is a six month, four hour view, of course. And our high bubble hit halfway through January at $1.07, where she fell through the 200, hitting a low mid July of 15 cents. Off of this low bubble, she has methodically but slowly been working it. She bounced off of that low and beelined it to the 50. She broke the 50 and then she got trapped right between the 200 day haul and the 50 day SMA. She was squeezed in there for about a week and a half. Then she got up on top of that 50, very slowly working it. And then when she got up on top of it solid, she took off running from about 25 cents to over 50 cents. So you've got a hundred percent gains here in the last four days. She is floating on that nine day SMA, nice and steady. All of the SMAs are following her across the 200, which means we're getting golden crosses. We got a little golden cross with the 20 crossing the 200. Here comes the big golden cross with the 50 day crossing. What I'm saying is there's going to be power on the charts. Expect a jump, a push. Everything is looking sweet here. Our volume has been strong the last two days, relatively speaking to all the days before. And look at our oscillators. All three of these are pushing up our PPO percentage price oscillator, just like the MACD. You read them the same. MACD works with the whole price. Percentage price oscillator works with a percentage of the price. I like the PPO better, but I do use them both. And our RSI is in the overbought right now at 71. She's on fire. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. First thing I notice is we have a change of trend in our 200. She was falling and now she is pushing up. We also have our price pushing up nice and evenly. Here's our 50, our 200, our 20 and our nine. They are all right there together and she is bouncing off of the 20. She's up right now. So I think it's safe to presume she's probably going to come down and bounce off of that 20. So if you're looking for an entry, look for the bounce. Osculators are still strong, but geez, just these last few bars after market have started to cool it down. Not by much, but she is cooling down a wee bit. Five day, five minute. Well, that's looking very good. We got a low bubble in this corner, which is where you want to see it. About 24 and a half cents. And we hit a high three days later of almost 60 cents. So you've got 150% gains there. She has bounced off of the 200 and she has started pushing up again. And it looks like she is following the 50 day SMA as she's doing all of this. All the SMAs are very tight and she is working her way up in an uptrend. She does look good though at this very moment on the five minute chart, our oscillators say she is cold, but she has got business going on. It is constantly growing. I think it's going to be an evolving business. It just gets bigger and bigger faster and faster. Their last revenues were bigger and the chart is looking good. I put DRTT on my watch list and see what she does over the next few days. Coincidentally, the last penny stock we're taking a look at also comes from the NASDAQ. I love these major exchange penny stocks. I do not only because they're free to trade, but to be completely honest, it is because of the oversight. Major exchanges are watching these companies like Hawks down in the OTC. We just keep getting the wool pulled over our eyes and I'm a little tired of that.
So we are taking a look at SORTS, ticker SRTS. This is Census Healthcare. We've got another atypical breakout chart. However, this time it has not started to break out yet. It is right at the door. It doesn't have to go any further. The next motion up is going to be running. So she looks good to me. Now, when I come over here looking for a catalyst, there's nothing from Friday or Thursday. June 25th is the last piece of news we had. However, it's like the last company. It's progress. They're showing us that business is continually growing. And also like the last company, they just had financials come out and they're better. So with a hot chart, that's enough to get it moving. So sorts finished the day on Friday at $3.10 with almost 14% gains. Looking to see what this company does, jumping into the most recent news press to get this description. Census Healthcare is a medical device company specializing in highly effective, non-invasive, minimally invasive, and cost-effective treatments for both oncological and non-oncological conditions, cancerous and non-cancerous. Census offers its proprietary low-energy x-ray technology known as superficial radiation therapy, or SRT, which is the culmination of more than a decade of research and development to treat non-melanoma skin cancers and colloids with this SRT100, SRT100 Plus, and SRT100 Vision systems. With its portfolio of innovative medical device products, including anesthetic lasers and its needleless transdermal infusion system, Census provides revolutionary treatment options to enhance the quality of life of patients around the world. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, it's up. They're not big numbers, but you have roughly a 350% increase going from 134,000 shares to just over a half a million shares. So we are getting some more interest and the price is climbing. Share structure on sorts. Don't know what the float is. The only thing they tell us is the outstanding share count, which is decent. 16.3 million. Can't have a float higher than that. And that is a nice share count. Financials for sorts. All right. So she was at $27 million in 2019. Took a huge drop in 2020. COVID. Came back up to that 27 in 2021. And now she's kicked butt pushing it up to $44.5 million. Looking at her quarterly, ooh, we had a big drop here the first quarter of 2023, dropping from a high quarter of $13 million in 2022 down to three. Now, I've got a piece of news here that tells us about the uh, last quarter. It isn't on the board yet, but as I said, they just reported financials. Revenues increased 33% to $4.5 million from $3.4 million. And system shipments have increased 30%, both compared to the first quarter of 2023. They achieved a milestone with the installation of their 700th system for a total of 708. And they expect to ship at least 60 more SRT units during 2023 and to return profitability in the second half of the year. We are right there now. So things should start turning around for them. Let's take a gander at those disclosures. I looked at the first two here. We got a Form 4. One of the insiders either acquired or disposed of shares. This time somebody sold. It wasn't a big sale, about 3,300 shares at roughly $3 a share, so about $10,000. Not a scary sale. I mean, considering the economic conditions, they probably got to pay the mortgage and the car bill. And then you've got an 8K here, which is the financial we just got done looking at. So popping on over to that news. Now, they don't give us a lot of news here, and I haven't done deep research. I don't know how much news is out there, but I do see business as usual. This came out at the beginning of July. The company partners with MIS Healthcare to distribute the sort systems in the United Kingdom and Ireland. And then just a couple weeks later, they got their first sale in Ireland. Now, this is what it's all about. Getting each hospital to buy one of these or two. How many hospitals are in the UK, in the US, in the world? Now, to be completely honest, I don't know if they have any competition. I'm sure they do. 
I don't know anything about their competitors, so there is some more research and due diligence needed. However, we've got a hot chart, we've got news about the business growing, they're making more sales, and the financials just came out and they're getting better. That's all we need with a hot chart. I hope you're not tired of atypical breakout charts. You know, these are the ones that break out the most often with the best predictability. That's why I bring them to you folks. And when they break out, they give us big, strong running gains. Why shouldn't we get as many of these as we possibly can? So we're looking at sorts, ticker SRTS, Census Healthcare. That's a six month, four hour view. We hit our high bubble of $9.92 halfway through January, and we hit a low here in May of $2.29 just after that weak financial in the first quarter of this year. Now I'm gonna draw a support line right there, a resistance, that's where she fell. She'll try to push up to that point again. After this fall, you can see she went sideways for a very long time. Once the 200 started getting close, she started working towards it. She actually tagged it a few times here, fell down, and right now, she looks like she is ready to break out. She came out from underneath every SMA, went through every SMA, including the 200. She has pulled back and she's right over her nine day SMA where she belongs. And right there is our 50 day, getting ready to cross the 200 day SMA. That's a golden cross. As soon as that crosses, people are going to probably play this regardless of what the news is. They found it on a scan. You can search golden crosses and people like to play them because they know a lot of people are watching that setup. So everything is looking strong here except for one thing. Our 200 day SMA has not started to turn up. It's still falling. I'm not happy with that. Our oscillators are strong. PPO is pushing up, MACD is about ready to cross the signal line with a lot of green bars accumulating, and our RSI is up near 55, just a little bit under. That's about as cool as I want her. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our high bubble, 364, and a huge fall. Now, what precipitated that fall? The letter M. Do you see it here? The letter M for murder. When you see an M, you normally see a huge fall afterwards. But did you know it works in reverse? Literally, if you see a W up here, that's for a winner. You normally see a very strong run after a W. So this definitely lived up to its name, murder. It bounced off that 50-day SMA, came down, landed on the 200, bounced on that a few times, and then fell without anything to hold it up. No more SMAs down here. Hit that low bubble, she was underneath all the SMAs, climbed through them all, broke through the 200, and just like on the four hour chart, she has settled right on top of her nine day SMA. That is a great pullback. Our volume was strong today compared to the days before, we had a lot more volume. Osculators on the one hour chart are strong, but they show a little bit of cooling off just because of this end of the day period here. Looking at our five day, five minute view, so there's your letter M, that big fall down to $2.70, and then the financials came out. They're making more money, they're making more sales, things are looking better. People got excited and she jumped pre-market. She started down here at $2.74 and went to $3.19. Oh, I don't know, roughly 60, 65% gain somewhere in there. Now she took a lot of that leap pre-market from 273 up to 305. She stuck up there for quite a while, fell at the bell, and then she started climbing again. Right now, she is sitting on her 50-day SMA, but had a big drop there after market hours. I think she's down to 306 right now. That doesn't look very promising, and her oscillators say she is in the midst of a fall right now. So I would watch her. I wouldn't expect her to fall. All of the SMAs are up here, so if she starts to fall, bloody heck, folks, she's probably going to come all the way back down to this 200. But she is fighting right now. She could easily jump back up onto that 50 and start pushing upwards. She needs to be watched. SRTS, she's got all the signs we're looking for, including a hot chart. 
all the stocks we looked at have got hot charts, some hotter than others, and they may cool down. So we've got to be careful. I've given you enough information to get you curious about these companies. I'm not selling you on any of them, folks. I'm just sharing hot information with you. I am not bringing you the top cream of the crop stocks. God only knows what they are, but I am bringing you quality plays. But do your own due diligence and research. Convince yourself that they're worth investing in. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.